Guys, guy asked me a great question. It was an iPad achievers to be clear. I said, hey, I'm gonna do a video for YouTube, for YouTube. Um, high rears. Man, what other breed has high rears? You don't think about no dog that has a high rear uh, as high as a donkey. But when you think about it, there are dogs that are bred with a slightly higher rear, but it assists in the dog's movement structure and getting to where it's supposed to be. I believe the Catalua, for example, has a slight dip, a little high rear, and that dog, be it, it's native to the, uh, I think Louisiana, and get busy. So guys, like, subscribe, scare, like, subscribe, and share. And one second, I'm gonna walk you through how to prevent high rears, what to look for in high rears, and uh, huh, objectively try not to breed no high rears. I'll tell you a secret right here. We have some pork belly and uh, Some people say you got to stay away from that swine It's debatable. I could go down a rabbit hole and show you the science where it's not the worst thing in the world <laughs> That being said uh, One of the easiest things to do when you smoke certain meats and put them together is to give people opportunity because we'll have guests Let's make tacos. Isn't that crazy? You can literally add chicharron tacos all kinds of tacos in various formats neither here nor there Let's talk a little bit about the high rear. Now, when again, you think of other breeds, how they're shaped, how they're formed, why is the high rear such a huge thing in the American bully? Why is that? Why is that not only a concern, why is it such an issue? Why does it keep coming up? How come the problem hasn't been solved for? <sighs> well, a couple reasons. People like taking big dogs to small dogs, small dogs to medium dogs, medium dogs to, to, to crappy dogs, and bad dogs to worse dogs and not the best dogs to better dogs so they can keep better in dogs what a tongue twister peter piper pecker but Pe i could never do that one the autumn peas so i could do the wood 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 woodchuck one back in the day clearly my stuff i need some water so when we think high rears as i said before i had a breeding plan with tron and amir now amir's parents 17 inches transparent 21 to 22 inches that's 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 a five inch gap and tron is he's grown lanky he's grown he grew lanky he grew and now he's starting to fill in he's got the massive somewhere back there believe me and i don't know that a mastiff would mesh well with a smaller dog now amir is maybe 15 inches tall so you've got her she's maybe 15 inches tron 21 easy easy 21 inches definitely over over 20 inches 20.5 makes him what you guys would call an xl i just say he's a large nice looking dog it's mine so and he'll never be bred outside of a program so we say how do you get a high rear well if i have a dog that's this big and then i take a dog to a dog that's this big. Where, where are all them bones gonna go? So you say, hey, I wanna make these dogs have puppies. I want this small table to work with this big table and I want the tables to align. I want them to be able to, to stand next to each other and look like the same tables. Uh-uh. What happens when you take one of these legs and put it on the back leg of this table? The table's like this now, the table's slanting. As Paul Wall would say, it's sitting sideways like the boys in the days on a Sunday night, they might. <laughs> and when you take front legs with a, and, and put it on a, you know, the front part, but the back part stays small. Now you start messing with the shoulder set. And the shoulder set means rotation. Depending on how the shoulders are set, you could be creating a high rear. So not all high rears are based on imbalances. Well, it's technically an imbalance. So when you're breeding, you want the shoulder set literally to basically be a perfect right angle if you can when it basically forms let's say this way here that's that's like this is a shoulder set as i run like a five-year-old okay five-year-old but it says shoulder so you got a shoulder that's sitting at a 90 degree angle you've got a shoulder that's slightly rolled forward and it rolls forward and when the dog's sitting down it looks perfect oh that dog's good but when it stands up 
that dog built like the Terminator and all the wrong reason because it got all these moving parts and none of them look like they mechanically should be or shall work together. <sighs> a bit troubling. And even more importantly, what we do know about high rears, it can, if you have an active dog, it can increase the risk for injury. I mean, simply put, an injury leads to a four to $5,000 bill. You don't ever want the rear so high that the back legs sit up like this here. Because if they sit up like this here, what ends up happening is, if the dog gets active and those bones just are rubbing against each other with no alleviation, you want them hawks. Let me see. Boom, boom, boom. Something like that. I'd have to go get the book and really break it down. But you want some bend in those hocks. You want that. You want that back leg objectively. Kind of like us. You want. You want to know. You want that thing back here from the hip. You. You want that. When that Joker's like this here, <laughs> Baloo look like he walking on stilts. <laughs> you gonna have a problem. And then what happens when your dog jumps? I know if I jump and I land straight like boom, lower back, knee, ankle. If I land here, boom, whoo. I literally feel no stress. That little light jump I did shook my brain. <laughs> so you want to know how to prevent high rears? I would encourage you to look at the grandparents. Look at the parents, of course. And I mean far as the numbers. Then look at the dog. Now you want the sum of this. You want all three of these dogs to be within one inch of each other when breeding. One inch. Make sure you guys can see that. So that's a one. One inch of, e of each other. So the grandparent, if the grandparent for instance is 19 inches and the parents turn out to be 20 inches, this dog can't be any less than 18 inches. Now, one, two, three. Now what happens if you take this, a dog that complements from the grandparent standpoint to dogs that have, you know, let's say a 17 inch, 18 inch, and a 19 inch it's still relatively close nothing seems too crazy so it's unlikely not improbable and probable means when you add up put a math case like oh this is not probable it's, it's not adding up it's not improbable still that the hybrid doesn't come out but again if i do if these numbers are relatively close they all look the same almost right versus 15 and 20. That's a big, that's a big, that's a big gap. That's a big gap. That's, that's a good, that's a good size difference. To say that. A 15 inch dog and a 20 inch dog look like, look like a horse and a miniature pig standing next to each other. <laughs> so, guys, preventing rear ears, rear, high rears, preventing high rears is as simple as, again, adding the numbers up. I would look as far back as you can. Let your dog, which will not be done growing until it's two, or, or three years old. The height side of it normally is done by 15 months to, to 18, 24 tops if you have a giant breed dog. These two, by, by this time the dog should be fully grown, your boy and your girl. So you're kind of like, okay, that's how tall they're gonna get. Now see how much they're gonna fill out. Point is, is you wanna prevent high rears. You wanna make sure that collectively the numbers add up and that the femur, I believe, to owner ratio stays the same, guys. So now, T Fit here, Fit Billy TV, stay tuned. We're gonna be doing some cooking stuff. Keep taking care of your dogs. I appreciate good questions. Shout out to those pet achievers and those people who wanna do more for the breed and even for the dogs. Stay tuned and keep handling your business.